All right, so Spider-Man No Way Home, the more fun edition or version, I think it's called, is basically just a re-release of Spider-Man No Way Home with some extended slash deleted scenes. Um, I'm basically going to get into most of the deleted slash extended scenes, but not everything. So if you want everything covered, um, I think New Rockstars, for the most part, covered everything that was extended or deleted that they uh, showed in this re-release. But there are a few things they left out, which I might touch on a little bit here. Uh, but yeah, overall, I'm going to say this now. Is this worth going to see in the theaters for those extended slash deleted scenes? No, not really. Um, honestly, it would be more worth just watching those deleted slash extended scenes on YouTube, which I'm seeing them leak on there or uh, wait for the digital version of it to come out or on Blu-ray or whatever it might be. Um, yeah, not worth wasting your money on it unless you really want to go see it. You're a diehard Marvel fan and you're a diehard Spider-Man fan. I love Spider-Man, so I was like, I'm definitely going to go watch this. And I'm such a freaking Marvel nerd. I'm definitely going to go watch it for some added scenes. Hell yeah. Um, but overall, do I regret my decision? Not necessarily. Uh, I almost regret it more because of my theater going experience. There were about six to seven kids in the row with me. It wasn't a necessarily packed theater, but um, yeah, they definitely took up the majority of the people that were there. And the weird thing is this theater usually doesn't allow kids in there past a certain time without an adult. So I'm guessing they had an adult there, went to go see that movie. I'm, I'm going to assume that the adult went to go see another movie because I didn't see an adult with them. But they were being loud the entire time. You know, two or three of them at a time would, you know, continue, continuously get up to go get more drinks because the uh, the drinking fountain or whatever, the, the soda fountain was right over there. Um, and I'm pretty sure they were getting slushies because after I came out of the movie, I looked at the ground beneath the slushy machine and it was just destroyed and, and gross and sticky. So, yeah, I can understand why they don't like having kids in there. Um I've worked retail, so I don't like kids being in the store just by themselves because they mess things up and uh, sometimes they cannot stand them. Some are well behaved, but uh, these ones are not. I would say they're about high school age, but oh, they really ruined a lot of the movie. They were talking the whole time, laughing in parts that weren't supposed to be funny, like, you know, spoiler alert for Spider-Man No Way Home, but like Aunt May dying, certain dramatic parts of the film that they were just kind of ruined by the kids being annoying and getting up and blocking my view of the the screen more than more than three times I think they got up like five times to go do whatever and come back in really loud and not the worst theater going experience I've ever had but probably the second worst um I'll get into the first worst some other day that's a, another story for another day but uh nothing really that crazy but yeah, they really ruined a lot of the movie for me. And then a few of these extended scenes actually ruined the movie for me a little bit. Um, I'll get into those in a second. But the way this starts off is a Zoom call with Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire, and Tom Holland. Thanking people for coming to watch the re-release. And talking about the success of the um, you know original theatrical release. And thanking the fans and all that. So that was cool to see. And... Uh, you know, with that, I was very excited to watch the film start off as it normally would. I've seen the movie several times. And the first extended scene that I noticed was in the DODC, where Agent Cleary, who also has shown up in Miss Marvel now, was interrogating Peter. And you see in the background, there's a little diagram of the Washington Monument, um, harking back to the Washington Monument incident from Spider-Man Homecoming. Um, and then... He also slams down a file, which we saw in the uh, in the trailers, and a lot of people were theorizing that it was Matt Murdock. No, it was not. It was our boy, Agent Cleary. But uh, he opens the file, and we see that it's a picture of Night Monkey, and he says, what do you know about Night Monkey? Um, <laughs> so that was kind of a funny moment there. But other than that, that's the only really big thing that we got from that scene. Um, after that, let me see here. Um, I don't know if this necessarily comes after and some of this stuff is out of order, but, 
um, the scenes with Betty Brant in this uh, in this extended edition, they were very annoying to me. They felt very out of place in these scenes with her. You know, it's her doing the kind of school news or whatever. And, you know, there's bad green screen, really cringy dialogue. And it's supposed to be that. But at the same time in the film, that's, you know, it has a good amount of humor, the theatrical release. release. Um, it is a more serious Spider-Man Spider film in the MCU, so I appreciate that. You know, there are plenty of jokes in that in that film, but it is more serious. And this one just, these extended scenes just make it a lot more jokey. And in fact, a lot of the extended scenes slash deleted scenes in general um, just give the film a more jokier vibe overall, um, which I don't necessarily mind, but you know, it also makes the more impactful moments a little less impactful. But yeah, any scenes with Betty Brant in here, I just found to be kind of annoying and a little, felt a little out of place. Also, the first scene to involve her goes on for like three minutes, and that is way too long. They should have cut it off. Uh, but hey, that's what you paid for, I guess. I guess. I guess? <laughs> um, but then there's also a scene in the school where the coach, played by Hannibal Burris, which I love, he is hilarious, um, and a bunch of the kids in the class are egging Peter on to climb the wall, and so he does it, and then one of them ends up calling him a freak anyway, so basically that's their kind of sideshow that they're just having fun with, um, sideshow Bob, if you will, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, let me see here, there's a scene where and we actually saw a little bit of it in the theatrical release. There's like a little clip of Spider-Man getting green paint thrown onto him and it's stuck on his suit. We actually see that full scene now and it involves his younger brother in real life, Harry Holland. And uh, basically Spider-Man is trying to stop this thief. He swings or slings him up from his foot and he's just kind of swinging there, kind of dangling. And, you know, there's one woman where he, she's like, your brain's not fully developed. You can't make these kinds of decisions yet. And then another guy's kind of like, uh, you know, supporting him. And he's like, oh, he can drive a car if he wants to. He's been to space. And then she's like, well, how do we know these two aren't in cahoots with each other? And uh, he's like, I've never seen this kid before in my life. And he's like, oh, yeah, we're in cahoots with each other. <laughs> but yeah. Kind of a fun scene there. It was cool to see his younger brother and to see them interacting with each other. So that was fun. And that's something I was kind of missing from the original theatrical release because I knew that was a scene that they did indeed film. Uh, but let me see here. Um, we get an extra scene with Happy and Matt Murdock where Matt Murdock is actually helping him uh, with that case with the DODC. And, you know, they're questioning him and whatnot. And, you know, the, right before this, we get the elevator scene, just kind of a few seconds of all the villains and Peter and May in the elevator headed up to Happy's apartment or condo, I, I guess you would say. Um, just kind of a fun little moment there. Goes on a little bit too long to like kind of add to the humor of it and just the awkwardness. So I appreciate that. Uh, just subtle humor there that I, I can appreciate for sure. But, you know, you get the whole scene of... Uh, you know, the security camera picking them up going into the condo and we see Happy with Matt Murdock getting questioned by the DODC, looking at his phone, seeing that on the security cam. And then Matt Murdock turns to him and says, stop sweating. And it sounded like Happy said, how do I do that? And I'm pretty sure he said, how do I do that? But it would have been funny if he said, how do you do that? Um, because then that could kind of you know, it kind of gives the inclination that, you know, Matt Murdock is, is blind. And so he would be like, how do you know that I'm sweating? Um, but in the film, in that scene, the deleted scene, he says, how do I do that? And I'm just like, it would have been better if he did it the other way around. In fact, in the new Rockstars video, they said, how, how do you do that? And I'm pretty sure that wasn't the line because... I remember that not being in the line in the film, and also I watched Sean Chandler talks about, and he said, how do I do that as well? So, um, yeah, kind of a weird line where they really just should have shifted a few words there, but yeah, there you go. Um, so let me see here. Uh, there's also a scene in the Undercroft below the San uh, Sanctum Sanctorum where, you know, Peter, MJ, and Ned are trying to 
get things together to actually help these people out. And, uh, you know, Ned's dropping a bunch of shit. And, you know, it's just played for kind of laughs, kind of dumb humor, which I, I really didn't like too much. I thought it was kind of dumb. I mean, I hate it when they just make characters dumb just to be dumb and they're just knocking shit over and being clumsy. But um, then they head over to this little miniature of the Sanctum Sanctorum. It's all lit up. And in the window, the circular window, you can see the silhouette of Doctor Strange just kind of looking out. And then as they kind of, uh, you know, put their focus on it and they actually notice it, that little, uh, that little silhouette walks away into the background. And I thought that was really freaking cool. And uh, if anybody can 3D print that for me, I will pay you. I want it to be like lit up. I want it to have the little the little uh, silhouette of Doctor Strange in the window. Because that was freaking cool. I could see that being like... You know how people have like those Halloween slash Christmas like little, little houses and stuff that they put on display? Like I want that but for the Sanctum Sanctorum. That would be freaking sweet. But uh, yeah, comment down below if you can make that for me with 3D printing. That'd be dope. Uh, but yeah, that's really all I have to say in terms of like the uh, extended slash deleted scenes. I'm sure there's more that I uh, I didn't quite notice. And also there is a post, I, I, they call it a post credit scene. I don't really think that's a post credit scene, but it comes like ap completely after all of the credits, like the studio logos come through and it looks like the movie's completely over. I looked it up before and I was like, are, were they lying to me? Is there not like another scene after the film? But it shows up. It's another Betty Brant thing talking about, hey, it was good to be in high school. We're graduating now. So, yeah, not necessarily what I wanted in terms of a deleted scene. I think it would have been cool after all this time of waiting for them to set up something with Andrew Garfield going forward as Spider-Man or Tobey Maguire going forward as Spider-Man. I mean, there's rumors of Andrew Garfield making another amazing Spider-Man film and being connected with some of these other characters that they're bringing in. So they should have done something like that to kind of build up hype for their own films coming. But, oh, well, it is what it is. I still had fun with it for the most part. It was fun to see Spider-Man No Way Home on the big screen again. That's really the main reason why I went. But, uh... Yeah, it was a good time overall. I don't think you need to waste your... I wouldn't say waste your money, but I don't think you need to completely spend your money on this unless you're not doing anything for Labor Day weekend and you really want to go check out a film. Maybe go do that. But I would also recommend checking out Breaking with John Boy, I guess. So, <coughs> excuse me. Had a frog in my throat. But uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say waste your time or waste your money, but... You know, your money and time could probably go to better stuff than seeing this version of Spider-Man. Just check it out on YouTube. I'm sure it's leaked. I think I even saw a few scenes leaked in there. Oh, I think I forgot to mention this. Uh, there's an extended scene with uh, Peter 1, 2, and 3. Uh, the three Spider-Men. Just an extended scene of them at on the uh, scaffolding of the, the being uh, currently constructed or whatever. Statue of Liberty. They're doing the construction on it to give it the shield. Um, and there, it's just extended scenes of them kind of talking about the whole web block and how their webs work and whatnot and just kind of getting to know each other a little bit. So for the most part, that's, yeah, I, I would say that's probably the scene and maybe the Harry Holland scene. Those are the two scenes that are most worth going to see this movie uh, for the extended scenes. But other than that, everything feels completely unnecessary and honestly feels better off not being in the uh, theatrical version but I will say the theatrical oh my god I can't talk right now the <laughs> theatrical version uh just the way it's put together the way it's edited uh the things I can compare with this extended version and the theatrical is that the theatrical just feels a lot cleaner a lot smoother the editing feels I don't know. The pace feels better. And this this definitely slows the pace down quite a bit. And uh, I'm glad this is not the version of the film we got initially. So it's not awful, but not my favorite. In fact, I wouldn't even say I'm going to really give this a, a rating. But if I had to, I would say like a 7.5 out of 10. It's still the same movie for the most part, but with some things that I just really don't feel completely necessary. And then a few things that kind of not enhance it, but it would have been nice if it was in the actual 
theatrical original version. So there you go. There's my kind of breakdown slash review of the Spider-Man No Way Home, the more fun version, I think it's called. Um, yeah, did you see it? Let me know what you thought of it. Are you planning on going to see it? Let me know. Uh, yeah, I'm on Facebook and Instagram at Pop Culture Podcast. The link in the bio of my Instagram page will take you to a page full of links where you can find a link to my T Public store, where to listen to the podcast on Spotify and iTunes, or not iTunes, Apple Podcasts. Uh, there's a link to my website and all that kind of stuff. So go check that out. Leave a like on the video, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I will see you in the next one.